Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial on Blender Shader Nodes. Today we'll be making this phantom flame effect. So let's get started. First, let's clear the scene and make a new plane right here. Let's scale on the Y axis by two just so that we get more horizontal flames. And let's open up a new shader tab and input the UV map. Here we are. As we can see, there's a UV map working as intended. There we go. And now let's separate the X and Y axes. So separate X, Y, Z node, put that there. And what we're going to do is add in a color ramp right here and one for the Y axis, and then multiply them together. Here we are. And as we can see, we now have the gradient that we can customize. So on the Y axis, Let's make it so that both ends are fading to black. Let's set this to ease. And let's add in another node just to make it so that the middle part has a lot more to it. That seems pretty good. And next what we are going to do is change the X axis so that it falls off. It starts at the ground and then the fall off to the top is a bit more gradual. There we go. That's pretty good. Next what we are going to do is add in a noise texture. Let's put that over there. Use the UV map, put it over there as well, and add in a vector math add and a vector math multiply. These will come into use later when we need to animate this. And the multiply will come into use when scaling it on the X and Y axes. So let's mix these two. Let's put in the factor right here. And as we can see, can we see that? Or maybe the scales. Oh, we need to set this to linear light. I almost forgot. Linear light is very useful when doing when mixing textures like this. Make sure you set the multiply to one, or else the shader, uh, the uh, procedural noise will not show up. Let's set the uh, y axis to three so that, that we get more horizontal flames. Maybe set the scale to three as well and turn up the distortion to give more of a wave effect. There we go. And we can animate this by using the add node right here. Let's input hashtag frame frame, there we go, divided by 100, uh, negative 100, to have the flames go up. Now these are going in kind of slow motion, we could change that later. But next what we are going to do is add in the fancy emission effect. So let's add in an emission shader, there we go, and a transparent shader right here. Let's combine these two, have the emission on the bottom, there we go. And now if we hook this up into here, we can see that things are a little bit broken. That's because we are using Eevee and we need to set this to alpha blend and the shadow mode to none. As we can see, this is now blending in different environments. So this part's transparent and this part's opaque. So next, what we can do is add in the fancy emission fall off effect because we want the sharp gradient that we saw with the previous shaders. So the way we do this is a fancy little uh, group of math nodes, starting with a minimum. We want the minimum to be 0.999, you'll see why in a second. And after that, we want a logarithm. Place this in the second input, there we go. Switch this to logarithm and have the logarithm be 0.999 as well. And as we can see, we're getting a fancy fall off effect. Now, if you do not use the minimum right there, uh, things break because when this gets to 1, it reverts back to 0 for some reason. I think that's just how the math nodes work. But having a minimum right there set to 0.999 fixes all that. So after that, we're going to add in another color ramp to make it so that the middle is bright and the ends are dark. As we could see here, it's already working pretty well. We could set this to ease just to make the middle a bit brighter. Actually, let's keep it to linear so that we have a sharper gradient. Okay, next what we can do is turn up the emission strength a bit more. There we go. Ooh, that's a bit too much. And as we can see, the fall off is starting to break again. So to fix that, we need one more part to this little node group right here, which is a multiply node. And what we do is we multiply the color ramp right here into the multiply. As we can see, it fixes most of that if we plug that into our emission shader. There we go. The fall off is looking much better. So let's use a frame just to keep all this uh, this node group in one nice and 
uh, organized place. There we go. Make sure to keep the nodes organized. It'll help you in the future quite a bit. There we go, let's put that right there. Next, what we are going to do is change the colors of this effect to make it purple and all those cool colors. So let's add in a color ramp. Uh, let's use the color output just so that we don't get the same input as the fraction, or, or factor, not fraction, my bad. So let's put this into the color and set this one to purple. There we go. And the other one to blue. There we go. Oh, we're all right, getting very nice colors right here. Okay, so next, let's, let's turn up the emission a bit more so that we get more glowing. Very nice. And if you want to change the fall off to make it even sharper, just add another 9 on the end of this. That might be a bit much. Let's set this to 0 0.95. There we go. And we could set this to ease. Oh, there we go. That's working quite nice. So let's zoom out on the node groups again just to see how it is. And maybe add in another frame or two for organizational purposes. There we go. Make sure you delete this principal BSDF as it is not needed. There we go. And that is basically the entire effect, but we can add in some more bells and whistles to this. There we go. So let's speed this up a bit. Uh, hashtag frame divided by negative 50. I think it's negative because our viewport is actually like this. But to fix that, we could just move this gradient over to here and change this from a negative to a positive. There we go. Now it's working 100% correctly. And from here, we could go and change the uh, detail, make it look a little fancier. But what we could do is make it so that the flames evolve over time. And for that, we'll need to set this to a 3D texture. There we go. And for the uh, animation, let's add in a new value node with the hashtag frame divided by 50 in here. There we go. Next, what we're going to do is use a vector math multiply node. Let's delete that driver real quick. Put that in there and put that up here so that if we do this, we can animate it on the Z axis over time as well. And if we turn this up to something like 0.5, there we go. We're really starting to see the flames dissipate and stuff. So let's add in another frame to organize the nodes and put that right there. And that is basically the entire effect, but we can go a little bit further with this. So let's go and add in a subdivision surface node. Uh, let's press shift E to crease the edges and add in one edge in the middle so that we can bend this as we can see here. Let's set this to three. So now what we can do is bend this however we want, make it align with like a sword or something like that. I know those are very cool. So there we go. Let's change the this a little bit more. There we go. Very nice. And this could be an Aurora Borealis effect too. Anything you want. And next what we're going to do is add in a uh, vertex, uh, vertex group. There we go. Assign this to the top up here. Add in a displace node. Put in the vertex group right here. Go up here, add in a noise texture or a clouds texture technically, because this does not work like all the other stuff in Blender for some reason. Change this to a color. And this is so that we get the geometry actually displacing over time. So it's not a completely 2D effect. Change this to RGB to XYZ. There we go, uh, it needs more subdivisions, unfortunately. There we go. And let's scale up this texture a little bit to like one. Yeah, one seems pretty good. And if we animate this by using an empty, and this is all technical stuff, not entirely needed, but it's appreciated later on if you're going to use this in a scene. So set this the coordinates to object and have that object be the empty. Rotate this by 90 degrees on the y-axis so that's facing up. There we go, it's finally facing up. If we move this empty up, as we could see, this is warping in three-dimensional space. Just to make it, you know, not just a cardboard effect. So to animate this, use another hashtag frame divided by 50. Uh, too slow. Let's change that to 20. And as we can see, it is going up at a rather slow pace, but we could see it's warping this in a very nice and organic way. Let's change this to 10. It's all a matter of getting the timing right. That's that's looking pretty good. We could change the speed of the flames rising. There we go. That's looking more like flames. 
And yeah, that is basically the entire effect. If you want to support the channel, check out, uh, <laughs> check out my Twitter page, my Gumroad page. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I will see you in the next tutorial.